eight in here. Did you pick that last week? We walk for we walk by faith and not by sight. So it does not matter what is happening around you. If that is not what God is saying concerning you, you do not pay attention to it. You walk by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the word of God. Faith in your relationship with God. I walk by faith, not by sight. It does not matter what anybody is saying. It does not matter what is happening. It does not matter what is even happening in the country right now. I know that in this new government, I'm not looking at what the economy is saying right now. I'm not looking at what the, um, the, first, the first price is saying right now. I am walking by what? By faith. And because no matter what, some people will be blessed this period, and I will be one of them in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So when you look, keep looking at what is happening around you, you will never be able to have hope. You will never be able to have faith in God. So that was part of what we discussed last week. Praise the Lord. I remember that our last meeting, we had not had a new government today. Praise the Lord. So today we have a new government. So you can begin to declare that it will favor you. You can begin to declare that it will, it will bring good things into your own life. What other thing did we learn? Yes. Praise the Lord. We must make sure that our soul is alive. Even if we are going through certain things, isn't it? Even though the body is suffering. When we are talking about the body, we are not talking only about your flesh. Maybe certain things that you are going through, isn't it? But you must make sure that your soul is always alive. Don't allow anything to tamper with your soul. Don't allow what you are going through to tamper with your soul. Don't allow upon any circumstance to stand back with your soul. Because the battle is in the soul. When you miss it in the soul, everything will go wrong for you. Let your soul always be alert. Let your soul always be strong. Do not allow anything to flow into your soul that will bring depression or that will tell you that you have failed, that will bring discouragement. Protect your, your soul. And let it always be connected to the Lord in whatever you are going through. And this is what we do not allow to happen. Most of us get easily distracted. Why? Because we are not connected with the Lord in our soul. We easily get carried away by the things that we see. Please look beyond everything that you are seeing from now and let your soul be connected unto, unto the Lord. Did you not say that he has plans for you? So when you are connected to him in your soul, whatever you are going through will not matter. You will always remind yourself of what he has said, of his promises, and what he can do. That is someone who is connected. Praise the Lord. Abraham was so connected to God that when God said, go and kill Isaac, he was not moved, praise the Lord. Why? Because he knew that God could do something. He didn't know what God was going to do, but he knew the God that he was serving. And he knew that even if he killed that child, the Bible tells us that, that Abraham in his heart was thinking that if, even if he killed that child, God was able to raise the child up. Do you have that kind of faith in your God? That even when you go through anything, God is able to see you through and turn it around for your good. Praise the Lord. And if you begin to think that way, the devil will know that he has lost every battle in your life. But we always give him, give him chance to molest us, to put us into depression because we are not connected. Because we are walking by sight. We are not walking by faith. Praise the Lord. Who can give us another scripture there that you uh, held on to last week? There are many. Yes. Even though I came late, but I met the last week that I was talking about we being the righteousness of, of God in Christ. In Christ Jesus. Yeah. And 
that we are ambassadors, isn't it? We are ambassadors for Christ. We are the righteousness of God through Christ. So we are ambassadors for Christ. And how do ambassadors behave? Praise the Lord. How many people know how uh, the ambassador, how do ambassadors live and how do they behave? Ambassadors are honorable people in the, any country where they are posted. Yes or no? They have honor. People see them as a representative of the nation. The representative of that nation. And so the honor they will give to that nation is what they will give to the ambassador. Praise the Lord. I always tell people the way, the way an American ambassador will be treated in Nigeria. I'm sure you can just imagine that. Yes. I will lend the, you know, the embassy. Yes. It's like an extension of that country. Exactly. For example, if you want to arrest somebody and they go into the American embassy, it's as if they are in the U.S. Okay. So they Lord. have like jurisdiction and protection Perfect. under that compound. That's exactly how it is. So now imagine yourself as an ambassador of heaven. How are you supposed to live? What are the things that are supposed to be happening to you? Do you get it? But do we see it that way? He just gave us an example now. He just gave us an example. So when you call yourself an ambassador of heaven, how are you, how is your character meant to be? And how are you supposed to be living? And anyone around you is supposed to be affected by you. Yes or no? Praise the Lord. Just like no one can arrest, like you said now, you know, somebody in that environment of the country where they are, you know, if the, 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 the embassy is like the country that that person is representing. So you are meant to be representing heaven. And so anyone that comes into contact with you or is around to you is also covered by you. Yes or no? Praise the Lord. It's enjoying your immunity. It's enjoying your, the power that you carry. The power of heaven that is surrounding you. We need your understanding of how to be. We need the understanding of who we are. We need the understanding of who this God that we are following is. We need the understanding of the name that we carry as Christians and as ambassadors for Christ. And the scripture also tells us that when you have come to Christ, what happens to you? That's part of being an ambassador. When you have come to Christ, what happens? Your life changes. Everything that happened to you before you came to Christ, everything about you, say, all things are passed away. Everything. Maybe the only thing that, that will not change will be your face and your name. So people will change their names. If the name is not glorifying God, you change it. All things are passed away and all things become new. So every old character that does not reflect God, that does not please God is dead. Because you are now a new person. We get this illustration. You died. And so when you are coming back, you are not coming back as that old person. You are a new person now with a new life. And that life is the life of Christ. Which cannot be mixed with the old life because the old life already died. So if you say you are a Christian and you are still living the way you used to live, you have not died. Praise the Lord. So let's begin to search ourselves. What I was doing before I came to Christ. The way I used to behave. The way I used to treat people. The way I used to talk to people. The way I used to relate with people. The life of selfishness. The wicked life. Do I still have it now? 
the life of envy, the life of hatred, do I still have it now? The life of backbiting, do I still have it now? If I, if I still have that life, then I have not died. I am not yet born again. That we say, if we can judge ourselves, you don't need anybody to judge you. Start by judging yourself. Start by looking inwards and begin to ask yourself questions. What I'm doing is it right? Would I be proud to stand in front of Christ to say I did this? If Jesus was to be in my shoes, would he behave this way? Even though someone has hurt you. Even though someone has cursed you. Even though someone has stolen from you. How would you react? I would say, someone offends you, do what? You call the person and tell the person. If the person does not listen, you call a witness another person. If he does not repent, by the time you call two or three people and he does not change, leave the person to the Lord. You can separate yourself from the person, but you cannot hate the person. You can separate yourself from the person, but you cannot hate that person. Praise the Lord. But the person repents. Oh, you take the person back as if the person has not done anything. After the person has repented. Not when you hurt somebody and you, and you have not repented and you are expecting the person to still take you back. No. Some of us are getting it wrong. That's what he says he's a Christian. He says he's a Christian. So, so you cannot even forgive somebody. We're not saying do not forgive. Forgive the person and leave the person to the Lord. But separate yourself from that person so that the person does not hurt you again. Because the person has not changed. This one has not repented. That's the same way God treats unbelievers, treats wicked people who have refused to repent. When they repent, yes, he says that his arms are opened to welcome them. But when they still want to live in their sins, he's there looking at them to be destroyed themselves. Praise the Lord. And that's why he says he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So if our own lives we have not reconciled with the Lord. How do we now help in reconciling others to Him? When you have come to the Lord, your life is no longer for you alone. Your life is meant to reconcile the other people's lives uh, to Christ, to God. But when you are not living right, uh, how do you now reconcile people to God? May your salvation not be in vain. May your salvation not be wasted. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today we move on to chapter 6. I love this, this um, uh, verse 20. Verse 20 of that chapter 5. He said, therefore we as ambassadors for Christ. Verse 20 of chapter 5. We as ambassadors for Christ, certain that God is appealing through us. Through who is God appealing now to the world? Who can tell me? Through who is God appealing to the world? Through me. Through you. We are certain that God is appealing through us. Therefore, because of that, we plead on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. And that's why you cannot throw any unbeliever away. We plead on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled. We need to have mercy on them. We need to look at them as people that have been destroyed. And be pity and look with pity upon them. I'm begging you. Come to Christ. I plead. 
need on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. The life that you are living will lead you to destruction. I can see destruction ahead of you. I can see the way you are living now, where you are heading. I am begging you, come to Christ. Forsake this way. Come back to God. Come back to God. We need to begin to treat people that way. With mercy. Look upon them with pity. Instead of hating them, use your life to plead with them. Should be six. Working together with him, we also appeal to you. Don't receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. Praise the Lord. Today is that day of salvation. Do not delay it. You are still enjoying God's grace. You may think you are enjoying right now. You don't know what will happen to you tomorrow. Receive Christ now. This is the day of salvation. Tomorrow, tomorrow may be too late. You may sleep tonight and you may not wake up. Something may happen to you as you are going out right now. So we give no opportunity for stumbling to anyone. So that the ministry will, be, will not be played. So would you not stand in the way of people coming to Christ? Not even your own comfort should stop somebody from coming to Christ. We give no opportunity for stumbling to anyone. Don't allow people to stumble because of you or because you refuse to speak or tell them the truth. So that the ministry will not be blamed. But in everything, as God's ministers, we commend ourselves. So as a child of God, you are a minister of God. That's what it means. Is somebody hearing now? Anywhere you find that's your work in your workplace, you are a minister of God. Watching a movie, you know, I think over the weekend, where a lecturer who also happens to be a GO of a church was sleeping with all the girls to give them money and taking money from the from the guys. Praise the Lord. What was he doing? What was that man doing? He truly was a, a Christian. He was putting a stumbling block on the way of those who will come to Christ because they knew that he was a pastor. And the young man that he was asking for money before he would pass that one, even though that one passed, but because he said, because he knew that the guy was from a rich family, he would not give him the correct mark. The boy was paying. And that young man was saying, Well, sir, you are a pastor. And he said, Yes, that the church needs money. Praise the Lord. And they have a building project. So it's not how to collect the money. And they have a building project, so they need money. So the boy should go and bring 10 million naira before he will get, he will give him. Mark. And because he, he knew that the boy's family had money.
Will he be able to preach Christ to that young man? Will he be able to preach Christ to those girls that he was sleeping with before giving their hands? What was he trying to do for his own comfort? He was putting stumbling blocks on the, on the ways of others. So, as God ministers, we commend ourselves in what way? By great endurance. How do you commend yourself as a child of God? By being able to endure. By great endurance in affliction, in hardship, in pressure, we are able to endure. You don't do things that will make others fall. By beatings, by imprisonment, by riots, by labors, by sleepless nights, by times of hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, and the Holy Spirit, and by sincere love. We go through all things as Christians. Why are we doing that? We are building ourselves and getting closer to the Lord and also building up others. Praise the Lord. Also building up others. If you have a pastor, he's always telling you words, words, words about his life. Amen. And always coming to knock on your door before he can feed and feed his children. Will you like to even be coming to church? Praise the Lord. That pastor's attitude will be demoralizing you. Will be discouraging you. And that's why we endure. And that's why we are patient. We still remain kind. That you may not even know what that Christian is going through. But it's ever smiling, ever joyful. Praise the Lord. As if he doesn't have any problems. By sincere love. You're doing that because of the love that you have for God and you have for the kingdom. And because of your hope and your faith in God. By the message of truth, by the power of God, through weapons of righteousness. On the right hand and on the left. That is all true. True glory and dishonor, true slander and good reports. As deceivers, yet true. As unknown, yet recognized. People may not know you. May just be in your corner, just bring God's word, just do your own. But heaven recognizes you. Praise the Lord. And that's why as Christians, we don't do things because we want people to clap for us. We don't do things because we want to be known. Or like those who are looking for fame. You do your things for the Lord in quiet, your own quietness. As unknown yet recognized, as dying and yet we live, as being chastened yet we are not killed, as grieving yet always rejoicing, as poor yet enriching many, as having nothing yet possessing everything. Praise the Lord. So many times that we make things happen for people. We enrich others. We make them laugh. We are also dying inside them. We do not have. But we are making others happy. Praise the Lord. And I was giving other children free education. Most of my children will not be able to go to school. Children have had to stay at home. That's 
born monster. Yet I was giving other children, order to push children free education. Then my husband, when he was alive, he just looked at me and he said, This is why something is wrong with you. Praise the Lord. We have spoken openly to you, Corinthians. Our hearts have been opened wide. Why was he saying this? For them to know that even though they were coming as apostles, as their pastors, it wasn't as if it was rosy for them. That they were also going through a lot. Yet, they were trying to make them happy. Praise the Lord. Putting aside their own happiness to make others happy. That is how to live as a Christian. Do you understand? If we are all living like that as Christians, we will not be hurting ourselves. There will be love, genuine love, sincere love. Also, you are thinking about yourself alone and you don't give a damn about the other person. Even in the church. As long as you can eat and your children can feed, every other person around you can go and die with the young sending. We have spoken openly to you. Our heart has been opened wide. You are not limited by us, but you are limited by your own affections. What are your affections? It is what your affection is what can limit you. Don't see that you pay attention to more. Things that control you. Things that you can't do without. They can limit you. Now in like response, I speak as to children. You also should be open to us. You know, just ask. So many ministers and pastors are open to their members as their mentors, their fathers, and their mothers. Even the children that you are open to, they are not open to you. And that's why some we go and start destroying their pastors who have given them everything, poured out everything, showed them everything, praying for them, giving them encouragement, teaching them the truth about the word of God. Then you look at such a person and you are destroying him or her at the back and you not cost already without anybody causing you. Then you also should be open to us. Praise the Lord. The last is they do not be mismatched, unequally yoked, be mismatched with unbelievers. Because it's when you begin to get mismatched with unbelievers that you begin to learn new attitudes again. Attitudes that you have already thrown away when you died and you became born again. By the time you begin to get mismatched with unbelievers, you pick them again. They begin to teach you how to lie, how to envy, how to hate, how to talk bad about people. Do not be mismatched with unbelievers. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? Your friends are unbelievers, lawless people, and yet they are your friends. What agreement do you have with them? How can you cope in their midst? Or what fellowship does light have with darkness? How can you cope? Where is your meeting point? 
None. Light and darkness cannot cohabit. There is no meeting point. What agreement does Christ have with Belial? And what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Praise the Lord. What are you talking together about? Your friend is an unbeliever. You are dating an unbeliever. What do you discuss? You can't discuss the Bible. If you were both unbelievers before you, you got married and you now gave your life to Christ, it's a different thing. You begin to pray for the other person. But not when you are a believer and you are now dating an unbeliever. What is your agreement? How can you even agree? What are the things that you are discussing? I will 
dwell amongst you. I will walk amongst you. I will be your God. I will be your father. And you will be my sons and my daughters. May the Lord truly know you and I as his sons and daughters in the name of Jesus. Do not be mismatched. That is causing a lot of problems today in the church of those who have been mismatched, marrying unbelievers because, oh, either this person has money and because, uh, you know, God is going to just do something and the man wants to marry me. Let me marry him. And you know that this one does not like the things of God. From beginning, And the man says, oh, she's pretty. She's intelligent. This one is a type that I can present anywhere. Says who? Is that what God is telling you? Everywhere I take her to yard, then we know that I have a, a beautiful wife. And you know that she does not like the things of God. You know that you can't pray with her. You know that you can't pray with him. You know that this person does not have the fear of God. You know that when you are talking about the things of God, he, he or she gets angry or discourages you. Yet, you want to marry him. Yet, you want to marry her. Do not be mismatched. There is no partnership between righteousness and lawlessness and wickedness. And that's how some Christians who are supposed to be good Christians today, they have become evil because of the kind of partners that they have. You marry a woman that does not fear God as a Christian man, she will turn your life around and turn you to a wicked person. So I pray this morning that as many that are in relationships that are mismatched, I pray that the Lord will separate you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will cause a separation in the mighty name of Jesus. Except you are already married. If you are already married, then you carry your cross. I begin to pray. I'm not praying for separation for you if you are married. Except if one who is an unbeliever now wants to live on his own. That's what the Bible says. Then bye bye. But I'm not praying for you who is a believer. No matter what you are going through in that marriage, you stay there. You stay there and keep praying. If that person does not live or does not want to live, you stay married to him or her. Because that was what you chose. Keep praying. And keep displaying Christian attitude in that marriage. Keep displaying the love of God in that marriage. And one day, God will touch that person. If truly you are genuine and you are actually practicing Christianity in that home, you are living like Christ, then God will eventually turn things around for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Any question this morning before we pray? If there are no questions, what have we learned this morning? I mean, this is a perfect time, actually. It's the middle of the year. For adventure, the first five months, you have gone through it without any hope. You have gone through it, you know, without joy, without peace. God is speaking to you this morning. You have been wondering Wandering in sin and uncertainty. God is speaking to you this morning. But make sure your life has been leading others astray. God is speaking to you this morning. There's a hope for you. 
There is no hope they will not be singing this word. So I've given you a new hope to take a new step from today. And I pray that you will embrace that and you start a fresh thing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I mean, you want to tell us what you have learned this morning before we pray? Yes. How do we do that? Our attitude, the way we live our lives, and uh, the way we associate, the way we relate with people, we help them, and also, you know, encourage them, pray for them, work together so that they can reach us as people. Okay, and when people offend you, you forgive. You don't want to have any problem to give any problem. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's a good one. Any other person, what have we learned this morning? When you are saying we are, I want you to also always personalize that this is how I want to live as a minister. This is how I'm supposed to live. If I'm not living that way, then I need to begin to live that way so that I don't cause, uh, put a stumbling, a stumbling block on the way of anyone. Yes, you want to tell us what you learned this morning? And that uh, um, should not be moving in the same direction with unbelievers, following them to do. What is not right, what the Bible says is not right. That we are not all the same in this world. The Bible says you are in the world but not of the world. And it's not everybody that is in the world is um, working um, with God or believes in God or is following God. So I do not follow anybody that is not following me. Praise, praise the Lord. Of course, we, we know when people are doing things that are not right, and we know that <laughs> this is, I'm not supposed to do this. When we are moving with them, before you know, you begin to do them. And a, 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 an example, or or the major way that one can actually move with unbelievers now is getting to attach to social media and doing everything people are doing there. Praise the Lord, yeah. Hallelujah. You know, talking the same way they are talking, reasoning the same way they are reasoning. So many of us we have just forgotten. That most of the people on social media are not on the same level with you. Most of them are not Christian, they are not believers. So when they are saying things, you don't say everything that they are saying, you sit down to think. An example was that during the election, electionary period, a lot of believers were just agreeing with unbelievers and were just saying the same thing. There must be a point that we cannot say the same thing. We cannot see things the same way. When unbelievers are cursing, you don't start cursing us because they are cursing. You don't start wishing somebody way bad. So many Christians fell into that trap. Wishing people well because some people are wishing them well and you joined. And you have not asked yourself questions. So many people that we wish bad, we cause because other people are causing them. You don't even know them one on one. You don't even know them. You just follow what people have said concerning them and you begin to talk. Same thing that happened to you. People can just start talking badly about you and everybody begin to say the same thing without even knowing you. Or even knowing whether you did what they said this person did is that bad. If you want to know it, your own is to read and pass. If you know that you, you cannot comment positively, just pass. And ignore. And don't take it to heart. And don't wish anyone bad. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do we have any other person who wants to tell us what you have learned? This morning have we learned something? And we have our sister here. Tell us what you have learned this morning. 